from JK Fiber Arts. Today, I thought that uh, I would let you guys join me in progress. Um, usually, before you see a bat I make, I will uh, work it first and decide and make sure that I know what I like and what goes together. Uh, this time, um, I did one and I liked it, and then I was gonna do a video of a second one. Uh, but um, I needed to put something on the drum to do a photo shoot yesterday for my web page. Yay! Uh, and um, he asked me to add some onto the drum carter, so I went ahead and did it. So you're going to join me in progress. I have uh, just the first layer on there, uh, but I'm calling this Hummingbird, and it's based on a photograph that I uh, got from a Hummingbird Watcher website. Uh, and um, it's such a pretty picture, and my mom, uh, she loved hummingbirds, and every time I see one, I think of her, and she, it was just her favorite thing. She had stained glass hummingbirds everywhere, and you know, outside sun catchers, inside sun catchers. <laughs> so um, this is, I think, going to be, she, I wish she was around to see it. It, she would love it. It's going to be really nice, and I have um, this, I blended already. Uh, and I did that off uh, camera as well. But what I did was I took some of this grape and then I took a, uh, a not quite royal blue, uh, and I blended it together so that I could have the more blue purple that you see uh, in the photo, which I'm going to show you in a second. Uh, and um, some of this has a very tiny bit of the uh, Angelina and I have this Angelina that is perfect for this, and it is uh, like a, a purpley Angelina, and I'm gonna use just a little bit because you, know, you don't want your fiber to feel too plasticky. Uh, and uh, this is a, a turquoise, and this is all merino, with the exception of this, which is merino alpaca, and this is roving, so it's already um, ready to go. And then here are some things I'm gonna use to paint on the top in between the layers, and this is the uh, uh, blue pulled silk sari. This is bamboo. These are um, mystery locks. <laughs> I am not sure where these came from. Um, I did not dye these, that's what I know. Uh, but uh, they're really nice. Um, they're not coop worth, I know that too. Uh, but uh, they are very clean and nice and very easy to open. They're very pretty. They have a lovely, whoops, not that one. But they have a nice sheen and I love the color and it hits the hummingbird transition perfectly. So I'm using that. Uh, and then we have more merino merino and then this is all bamboo. So mostly merino and then some little mix-ins. It's gonna be really pretty. And you can see, I can show you here on the drum carter. Uh, and so we're putting it on in this order left to right. And uh, let's get started. Actually, let me show you the picture first. Here is the picture of the hummingbird that I am going off of, and the photo credit is from at uh, Bird Detective, uh, and uh, it's a beautiful photo, and you can see that uh, this is the head of the bird, which is that kind of blue-purple, and then the uh, turquoise and fading into the, the green, into the yellow. Uh, I, I'm gonna thin out this yellow a little bit. I'm gonna have the green go over a little bit further and I'm probably gonna take a little less orange. I'm gonna cover this with some yellow just to blend it a little bit uh, to give us like a better transition. Uh, and then I really like this purple here. That looks great. Uh, and I have a little bit of sparkle because the hummingbirds are iridescent. So uh, this is what I based it on and I am excited. The first bat I took off looked really cool. So I hope this one looks as cool. Here are the tools that I'll be using today. The burnishing brush the hairbrush cleaner, my packer brush, and a stencil brush. Uh, I got this from Michaels. This came with my drum carter. This is an additional purchase with the drum carter. Actually, I think this might have come with the drum carter. I have two. One I bought before I had this carter. Uh, and then um, this is a hairbrush cleaner from Amazon. Uh, and it's literally called the brush cleaner. So here we have our photo of the hummingbird from at Bird Detective. And I have the blue purple head, which I, I love that blend of blue purple. It really turned out great. I'm very pleased with that blend. Uh, and then uh, the turquoise transitioning through to that little bit of green that you get through here. And then a little bit of yellow. And then we're into the orangey. Then you get into this kind of orange purpley pink and then to the dark purple and uh, for the wing. And I think that's really cool. 
So uh, let's uh, put on some uh, sparkle and some shine. The first thing I'm going to do is put on some of this uh, blue hold silk sari and it has some little pops of uh, other silk through it and coincidentally turquoise pink and green which is perfect for this uh, it's like it was made for me and what i'm gonna do is uh, i'm doing all this with the uh, stencil brush so i don't cut myself <laughs> and i'm just gonna put that in and this will give a little bit of texture and this bat's going to be lightly textured it's not going to be a ton of there's not going to be a lot of like tweety bits or anything this is just going to give a little bit of a uh, nice color pop through here throughout the layers and it doesn't take too much okay that's perfect and then the next thing we're going to work on is a little bit of sheen through the turquoise I'm going to do the same thing. Let's just go around so I can start at the strip, at the doffer strip here. And this is just going to give us that nice sheen. I do like the bamboo. It's nice when you spin it. It's nice when you have it in a blend. Adds some good stuff here. A little bit of shiny gold. This adds some of that sheen. All right, next up is some of the light purpley stuff. Kind of that light purpley shimmer here. And then comes the Angelina, which is really pretty. You have to be careful you don't use too much of it. Now I'm going to just pack this and we will uh, burnish and we'll be ready to add the Angelina. looking really good. So let's add the Angelina. So the Angelina, I am using very teeny amounts, like this much. And all I'm doing is I'm just lightly putting it on. I'm just laying it on here, really. I'm not even using the stencil brush to push it down in yet. I'm just going to lay some across here. Very lightly, mostly just in the purple. I'm trying to steer clear of the yellow because I don't want it to be too brown looking. And I wasn't really using the uh, stencil brush uh, to, to start with this because I didn't want to make any like big chunky areas. Sometimes if you grab it with the stencil, br stencil brush and then you, it gets stuck deeply in there and you pinch it down, you'll end up with like a larger chunk, which is cool when you're making a textured yarn. It is not cool if you're trying to distribute Angelina evenly. All right, I think that is enough sparkle. And we don't want to make metallic yarn or plasticky yarn. Plus, I have worked with Angelina before, and it's <laughs> even when you're very, very light of hand, it gets everywhere. I mean, look at my drum carter top already. Let me uh, bring this around to the other side, and we'll take this off the carter. Okay, we're going to take this off. Hopefully, I'm not blocking the picture. It took me a ridiculous amount of time to find a way I could do this. <laughs> ridiculous amount of time. Here we are coming through the uh, orange pink and that's looking good. No mud there. That's a beautiful transition. And I'm getting just that little bit of iridescence. I love it. It's absolutely perfect. It's not overdone. Okay. Let's get this off. 
Let me make sure this is all up a little bit so I can get underneath of it with my plastic here. There we go, right up against it. And this one's gonna go right against the pins on the top, squishing this down. And that should do it. This is gonna be a fun spin. <laughs> I'm already loving it. And there we have it. Okay, here we go. Just gonna take the uh, rubber bands off each end here. And we're going to unroll this. Mm -hmm. oh, 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 look at that. Oh my God. <laughs> That's so pretty. Gorgeous, gorgeousness. So here is our photo. Let's see if this will stay like that. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm totally winging it here. Ha ha, no pun intended. Maybe pun intended. <laughs> and here we have it. Look at that. Oh, it's so pretty. It's so fluffy and just the right amount of sparkle to it. Hopefully this is going to look like a hummingbird all rolled up. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. And there we have it. Hummingbird. Next up, we'll do some hummingbird roll eggs. I am ready for the roll eggs of the uh, difference with the uh, roll eggs to loading the drum carter is you shouldn't use the uh, burnishing brush to compact it down harder. It makes it really hard to draft uh, onto the uh, wood dowels. Um, so the uh, instruments that uh, the tools I'm using for this is my packer brush and um, I will probably use my uh, stencil brush a little bit to put on the sparkle of the uh, uh, Angelina. And then I have this little wooden block here, which will hold my handle, and I will show you how all that works. Uh, and um, that'll be when I'm drafting it off. So let's uh, just throw this on real quick. Uh, the other thing is uh, when you're doing the roll eggs, you don't want to put as much fiber onto the drum. So this drum can hold, depending on the fiber type, um, about up to seven ounces. And I would not put seven ounces on here. I'm, I'm only probably gonna put on like two. And uh, I'm just gonna keep this running here and I'm just gonna add this stuff on. And as soon as I get this filled up, the other thing that is important when you are doing roll eggs is to uh, load the drum carter evenly. If there are spots on the uh, drum carter where it's significantly thinner, when you go to uh, draft the uh, roll eggs off, it will um, be really thin in some spots and then they might break. You can still spin it though. It just, if you were gonna do anything uh, like for the aesthetics, like if you were gonna give it as a gift or sell it or something, it wouldn't look very good. I'm just gonna finish this up. And then uh, I'll see you when I just put the little sparkle layer on top. Okay, I've got all of my uh, base layer on. No, I was gonna say I do, but I see a spot that I wanna add a little to. I almost had all my base layer on. I see a thin spot right here. I thought that I had checked everything thoroughly, but apparently I missed a spot. All right, let's just put this on right there. One little thin spot. All right. And then the next thing I'm going to do, I have 
Just a touch of this nice shiny bamboo. Kind of just gloss it up a touch. And we have some of this nice purple to go over here. And I'm gonna run this one on my, um, through the liquor in and uh, we'll see what happens with it. I think that's gonna be lovely. And then I have to get my gold out still. All right, and here's the gold. I'm gonna do a couple of different strips of gold. Okay, let's see how that goes. And um, this will probably stick to the liquor in a little bit, but hopefully not too bad. Let's see. You see how long it takes for it to catch those fibers and draw it on? <laughs> that took a, a second. It looks like the yellow one's gonna take forever. Might have to help it a little, I'm not that patient. There we go. Perfect. Let's see if there's any places you want a little more shine. Ooh, yeah, let's do a little more turquoise. I do like the shine. And I decided against putting the locks on, I think because a lot of people use Rolags to do drop spindling from, and I think this would be really hard to drop spindle with, even though awesome. But uh, I'll just save that and put it in with um, the next bat I make. This is how my life goes. I think everything's done. There's a fine line between perfect and gilding the lily. <laughs> and I haven't gilded the lily yet. I'm still in the, uh, it's gonna be perfect. I like that little bit of transition too into the turquoise. Plus it needed just a little bit more there. I just don't want it to be too thin. I think that's gonna do it. Okay, now we're gonna add the sparkle. Let's uh, turn it to the beginning so I know where I need to stop. And. When you uh, spin this, it will uh, distribute you know, even more throughout the uh, fiber. And again, uh, I'm trying not to put too much of this in, but I definitely want every roll egg to have some, you know? Okay, we got stencil brush. All right, I got the last little bit on there. <laughs> The thing about Angelina is you'll find it everywhere for a while because it is so fine and it does uh, tend to stick to things. <laughs> I'm just gonna get this uh, nice and distributed and just kind of comb it through so there's no big chunks of it anywhere. All right, now we are ready to row lag. All I'm doing for this is the uh, same as before. I'm just going to using my uh, doffer here, take uh, this off. And then uh, I will show you, I think I'm gonna do this, I do it from either side. Um, the last time I was doing it from this side, but I think I prefer pulling it off from the other side. I used to be always on this side and this was my preferred side, but I have been uh, changing my methodology with this just a little, finding out what works best for me. Ooh. Oh, that's going to be a beauty when it comes by. Wow. I love that. <laughs> Let's try not to stab me, though. This thing is lethal. Okay, there we are. So that was easy breezy beautiful. Let's make sure we don't have any little fibers, because that will mess you up. Okay, good. The next step is I'm going to uh, take the uh, band off of here. And you only, for the clemis and clemis, I only need to take it off the drum side because the uh, right side is the drive band for the drum and the left side is the drive band for, the, well, it's for the motor, but it's also for the um, liquor in. Okay, and then I'm gonna put this handle on. And now my drum can move very freely. Uh, and there's a nice feature on this handle where it's actually spring-loaded and you can just pull out and move it. That's why this block works. Uh, you can adjust it so that it will come closer or further away from me. So if I want to start here, which will be a little bit easier for me than reaching over the drum, I can just rotate the handle so that it fits where I want it to go. And now we are ready. And that's going to hold my drum from sliding while I uh, draft. 
So I have my two dowels. Uh, these are the dowels that came with my blending board actually, and they are perfect for my purposes here. And all I'm doing is making sure that we have all of this fiber up here, not stuck to the pins, making a mess. We want everything to be nice and smooth. And this one goes on the back here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of slide this up because I don't want too much of this hanging out over the edges here. And then I'm gonna start to wind it like this. And as I'm winding it, I'm gonna start to draft. And again, if you have this nice and, and evenly loaded, it should give you a nice smooth roll egg. And you just draft off like that. And then what I do is I like to bring it over to my liquor in to get that finished edge to it. I just have to be careful because I'm not very far along yet. I don't want to get tangled in that stuff. <laughs> And here we have our first roll egg, uh, hummingbird roll egg. And there's just a tiny bit of sparkle in there, so there should be in each one. Uh, and I focused on putting it more in the darker colors, but there is a little bit throughout, and just enough to give it that hummingbird iridescence. And I'm going to just pull out one of the dowels, and then the other dowel like that. And here we have our roll egg. And roll egg should be light and airy, so you can see almost right down the center of that thing. That is perfect and lovely and airy and, ooh, so pretty. So I'm gonna roll this one up and uh, we'll measure it. My first one's usually a little fat. <laughs> that first roll egg weighed nine grams. So actually, I kinda like that weight. It was, it was perfect. So I'm gonna try to stick with that. Um, and you can see it gets a lot easier now because the uh, drum uh, I don't have all that loose stuff from the very first pass. So I'm gonna go down enough so that I have um, the ability to roll this. And then I'm going to draft back. And again, this is where it's really helpful that you um, don't use the packer brush because you can see that right even now I'm having a little bit of tension on this uh, to uh, draft it, which is why I decided I like standing on this side of the uh, drum because then I can hold the carter if it decides it wants to walk. But as soon as you get past that initial inertia, then it rolls really easily. And you do want to draft, draft, draft. Drafting it is going to be the way to go uh, and give you that nice, smooth, airy roll lag. This is probably plenty thick. All right, I'm just and whenever you have it as thick as you want it, whatever your weight is you're looking for, uh, which I just eyeball. Sometimes I'm really short and sometimes they're fat. <laughs> you just break it off. And then I'm gonna stick down here on this, like uh, the last one. Whoop. Make sure we're not catching on these. Eventually that's all gonna tuck in there. There we do. And all I'm doing is just doing that little, I'm just finished, just doing a nice little finished edge on there. So now you can't see where it was joined at all. And again, we slide out one stick and I'm just gonna keep doing this until I get a pile of roll eggs off of this drum. Uh, the um, amount that I'm trying to do here is about two ounces of roll eggs. Um, maybe I'll have a little bit more than two ounces. We'll see how it goes here. But here again, we have a lovely, open, airy roll egg. Go ahead again and just roll these up. We'll see how much this one weighs compared to the other one. The other one was nine. This one feels lighter to me, but you know, sometimes when you're just talking about grams, you can't really tell the difference when you're touching it. Let's see how much this one is. Oh, that one's eight. So we're, we're in the neighborhood. So I'm just gonna keep doing this and then I will uh, show you everything at the end. Here we have our beautiful two ounces of hummingbird roll lags ready for spinning either on your wheel or on your drop spindle. I wanted to take uh, this moment to thank you from the bottom of my heart. I was overwhelmed with all the uh, support I received and uh, the uh, purchases from my online shop for its uh, opening uh, day last Saturday. Hopefully you uh, who purchased will have your packages by now and you will be spinning and knitting happily away. And I would love it if you would post photos and tag me on Instagram. 
or Facebook at JK Fiber Arts. And I will have the hummingbird art bats that you saw today and the Rolex um, for sale on my shop right now. If you are interested in seeing these or any other things, you can click on the link at the end of the screen and it'll take you directly to my shop. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, spin happy.